Now let's talk about how to actually make that confidence interval. So when we have our sample standard deviation, remember we use the symbol S, and it turns out it's actually a biased point estimate for sigma, the population standard deviation, but it's the best that we have. So we're used to an unbiased estimator, meaning that about half the time it underestimates and half the time it overestimates. Turns out with S, it overestimates like all, every time, but it's the closest that we have, so hopefully it's not overestimating by too much. Now remember, our distribution is skewed, so since it's not symmetrical, we're not going to be able to do the confidence interval the way we were before. We can't take our sample standard deviation and add or subtract E. Remember, that just stands for the point estimate plus or minus the margin of error. Since our margin of error isn't going to be the same on both sides because the height of our curve isn't the same on both sides of our centered point estimate, sample standard deviation, then we end up using this formula, which is n minus 1, so the sample size minus 1, times s squared. So times the sample standard deviation squared, but divided by chi-squared right and chi-squared left. Keep in mind that the squareds on the critical values does not mean we're actually going to square. That was because it's the name of the table. But in the formula where we have a squared on s, we will be squaring our value. And then a lot of times we see that same formula again where we just make sure that it's clear that we're saying the population standard deviation is somewhere in there. So when it comes to finding chi-squared right, I'm sorry, I want you to notice in the formula that chi-squared right came first in the formula. And the reason for that is it's a larger value than chi-squared left, and when you divide by a bigger number, you get a smaller answer, which needs to come first in a confidence interval. So let's solve our first problem. Construct a 99% confidence interval for the standard deviation of salaries of airline pilots based on a sample of 12 salaries that averaged $97,334 with a standard deviation of $17,747, $17, assume salaries follow a normal distribution, answer with a whole number. Okay, so dissecting it, we're asked to make a 99% confidence interval, but most importantly, it's for the standard deviation, like we gotta underline that. It's the standard deviation confidence interval that we're making. And notice it gives us what the sample average is of those 12 pilots, but we're not going to need that. And even though it just says a standard deviation of 17,747, that's obviously a sample standard deviation for two reasons. One, it's in the sentence about the sample, about the 12 salaries. And number two, if we had the population standard deviation, we wouldn't need to make a confidence interval to try to figure out what it is. Okay, so first we need to find our critical values. So we start with degrees of freedom, n minus 1, to get 11. Whoops, my other 1 didn't show up on my 11. Sorry about that. Next, we move on to alpha, which is 1% or 0.01. Alpha over 2 is 0.05. And since we'll need it later, 1 minus 0.05 is 995 that we'll use for chi-squared left. So to find chi-squared right, we go to row 11, column 0.05, and hopefully you found 26.757. Next, we find chi-squared left, still row 11, but now column 995 from the value we found up above, and we get a critical value of 2.603. So going down to the formula, we start with n minus 1, so it's 12 minus 1. Don't use 11. Remember, that was degrees of freedom. I mean, it is 11 that goes here, so you might just start with that. 
then we're going to be multiplying with 17,747 squared. Huge number. Dividing by chi-squared right, and we found that to be 26.757. And now doing the upper end of the confidence interval, n minus 1 times s squared divided by chi-squared left. Hopefully you can enter that straight through into your calculator, just 11 times 17,747 squared divided by 26,757, and then take the square root of that, or some of you can actually enter a square root sign first. You should get 11,378.96 for the low end, and for the upper end, 36,482.46. Now don't forget, we're trying to estimate the population standard deviation based on our sample. And yes, our sample standard deviation of 17,747 is in this range that we created. If not, somewhere we made a mistake. And so I can go ahead and answer with whole numbers to be 11,379 to 36,482 is the sandwiched ends of where my population standard deviation must be.